Hey guys, David here, TexasHornsFans.com, back with another video uh, predicting, previewing the 2020 position breakdowns. This video, we're looking at the DBs, the last line of defense. So don't forget to give the video a like, share it out, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so you don't miss all the other videos, and definitely leave your comments below. Let me know kind of what you're looking forward to with this group, who do you hope steps up, um agree disagree with anything i say doesn't matter let me know what you think um so obviously i think with this group what we're looking at is um not much else to go but but up <laughs> really really struggled i think for the most part of last season but in a lot of individual games i think this group you know, despite all of the injuries week to week, I I, I think a lot of times they really kind of held their own. Uh, I, I think they did so for most of the Oklahoma game, for a lot of the TCU game, and I think it's easy to just kind of look back at last year's schedule and results and just kind of assume that this group was horrible. They certainly weren't good, but I think if you look at some of the some of the smaller uh, matchups and different points of, of different games, um, they looked better than I think the season total shows. So you know, it, like I said, obviously this group was really really impacted by injuries and youth last year. You know, I. I think this is the year where youth is no longer an excuse. Um, There's still not the senior leadership in the defensive backfield, but the those that are going to be the leaders this year in 2020, they have plenty of in-game experience to to step up and and live up to their hype, right? Overall, last year, the Texas defense allowed 306.4 passing yards per game. So, really, just an embarrassing uh, defensive performance from a from a passing you know passing game. Um, the only three teams uh, who were worse than that: Texas Tech, UCLA, and New Mexico. Okay, so the Texas Longhorns outrank those three teams only in major college football when it comes to pass defense. So, like I said, nowhere to go but up, hopefully, with this group. Um, Just a couple notables, obviously. Losing Brandon Jones, senior team captain, um, that's going to be a hit. Uh, Was number two on the team last year in tackles, so not just his production but his leadership and experience at safety. And then uh, Kobe Boyce is either quitting football or taking time away to just kind of take care of his health. And in particular, he noted his mental health. So, you know, definitely hoping that he, you know, gets everything under control, Wish totally wish him well and um, good for him for making the right decision, you know, for himself. Anthony Cook, who had announced that he was going to leave Texas, is now staying, so he will be back. So let's take a look at projected starters and the key reserves for for this group. So still looking at, you know, kind of that the 5 DB lineup. Deshaun Jameson, obviously absolutely deserves a solidified starting role at one of the cornerback positions. Um, He, along with Caden Stearns, uh, is a preseason All-Big 12 selection. And so just really glad to see him kind of finally emerge as a legitimate full-time starting cornerback. And I think really more than anybody back there really showed last year that he can be a game-breaking difference maker. Uh, you know, he 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 just seems to make big-time plays when it really matters. So really, r- really proud to see him there. 
uh, locking up one of those spots. Projecting Jalen Green right now as the other starting starting cornerback, but this among all five starting positions, I think is is most up for grabs. So looking at Jamison solidifying one corner spot and then the other one, we'll see. But if I had to pick somebody right now who I think is going to step up and take over, it would be Jalen Green, especially with Anthony Cook kind of kind of, you know, being a little wishy-washy of, of is he going to stay? Is he going to leave? Um, so if, if I had to pick somebody right now, um, I'd, I'd pick Green. And then obviously I think the two safety positions, um, barring injuries obviously, are, are locked up. Caden Stearns, B.J. Foster, both juniors, both having significant playing time uh, over the past two years and, and, and really even coming out of the gate as freshmen, uh, being entrusted with with a lot of playing time. You know, I think Caden Stearns could absolutely step up if he has a full, healthy season uh, to be one of the premier safeties in the country. And, of course, not knowing who all is actually going to play, if we're even going to be able to finish out an entire an entire season. Um, as of this recording, we've the Big Ten and the Pac-12 are out, so... Um, all of those guys are gone unless they have a 2020 season in the spring of 21. Who knows? But looking at some of the stats from last year, um, Brandon Jones, like we said, was number two on the team in tackles with 86. And then Caden Stearns, even with the time that he missed, I believe he only played in nine games, was still number three on the team in total tackles with 59 had four tackles for loss and a sack. So, you know, I, I, I think that's definitely pretty comforting knowing that he still missed a pretty good amount of time but was still number three on the team in tackles. Um, he also had 44 solo tackles, which at safety, you're, you're going to have a lot of solo tackles. You, you, have to, you have to make tackles one-on-one in the open field by yourself. And then Chris Brown, uh, Chris Brown, number four on the team in tackles with 46, three tackles for loss uh, and an interception, two passes defended. And so I've got Brown right now kind of filling in that fifth uh, defensive back role, call it a nickel. Uh, in this defense, it's typically called a spur. Now, Brown's another guy kind of like Jamison who seemed to really just kind of pop off the t- TV screen if you're watching the game and just to kind of make plays. He, he just kind of came off to me as a guy that that had his name called a lot, right? And I don't know if that's by design. I don't know if that was just using him as a disruptor at the line of scrimmage, uh, knifing into the backfield, and, and obviously having to fill in for a, a lot of injuries last year. So... You know, wrapping wrapping all that up, I you know you you, you got to feel pretty confident about this group. Sure, on paper, uh, hoping that <laughs> hoping that they stay healthy, but um, I feel pretty strongly about about that group of starters. Um, Chris Brown, you know, he's been here a while, and then you know the rest of the guys are juniors with significant playing time. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see Chris Brown instead of maybe being that fifth defensive back um, rotating in with B.J. Foster some. that they, they seem to me to be the same type of, of player, more physical, not afraid to attack the line of scrimmage, not afraid to blitz, and um, just big hitters, just disruptors, right? So looking at some of the key reserves, didn't even have enough space to put them all on here, but these are the guys that I'm that I'm looking uh, at most. Kenyatta Watson, Tyler Owens, Josh Thompson, Montrell Estel, Marquise Caldwell, and then obviously uh, putting Anthony Cook back on there uh, now that he is back with the team. You know, overall, I, I think safety is the strong point with this with this team. I think you have experienced safeties back there that you can trust uh, in uh, one-on-one, but you can also trust, you know, if, if, if they are wanting to use B.J. Foster, 
um, to disrupt the backfield and in, in blitzes. But that that's where I th- I think the strength of the of this group lies. And, but there's obviously a lot of other young players. Um, yeah, like I said, we didn't even didn't even have room to to, to list all of the uh, all of the reserves on here. So overall, you know, I I, I hope the defensive line and the linebackers do a better job of taking some pressure off of these defensive backs. You know, I I think in the Big 12, what we're seeing is more and more of a trend of smaller, faster, you know, players, even, even at linebacker. So speed is the name of the game, especially in this conference. Um, you know, and among the players that that I would like to see maybe to see more of some of these young guys, I thought Montreal Estel stepped up and and had some some uh, some good plays last year. Uh, Kenyatta Watson as well. So you know, it's it. I think it's easy for us to like look at all these four star guys and kind of wonder like, well, where are they? You know, why? Where's Tyler Owens? Why isn't he stepping up and making an impact? All well, these guys just aren't going to get that much, you know, uh, opportunity. Um, even if you are playing a significant amount of time, you may only have 20 tackles in the entire season, you know, maybe two per game. So, you know, that those are my projections for the DB group. Um, you know, like we said, in the, like I said in the beginning, obviously a group that overall really hope they step up. I really hope that they, you know, get through a season, have some continuity there for who actually is going to be out there playing and, and getting those in-game snaps and, and really just kind of learning to play with each other, right? Learning to communicate, learning to um, play together and, and, and trust each other. So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we see that. But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are, guys, about this group. Um, drop your comments below. Who do you expect to step up? Uh, what do you want to see out of this group? And who would you like to kind of see, you know, emerge among the young guys? All right. So, give, like I said, give the video a like. Um, check out our link below at TexasHornsFans.com. Also a link to our Facebook page where we have more than 57,000 Longhorns fans on there. It's a great, great group of Longhorns fans. If you're not on there, definitely come and join us. Don't forget to just Subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Welcome.